Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Brady Boy Bill Karras, out in the Palouse again. And uh, ran into a friend, became a friend, a couple of months ago at uh, my chiropractor doctor's office, believe it or not. He had an IH hat on, I made some comment about his hat. He says, well, come on down and we get the combine out and you can uh, take some pictures and do some riding along. So, uh, the Lashaw Farm, or Lashaw, I guess it is, Lashaw, I'll find out, is uh, gonna be my host this afternoon. So we're taking a few pictures. We're looking at a 2388 Case IH. And uh, the hill here doesn't look too steep. But in any event, we're gonna see what's gonna happen here. I don't know if he's coming down this way or exactly what he's going to be doing. Besides kicking up a whole lot of dust. I guess maybe I better move out of the way. Okay. Here we go. Shotgun today with uh, Mr. Mike Lashaw and his Case IH uh, combine, and we are taking about a 30 foot cut. And we got a few acres to go and 500 plus, or what, a few acres down and about 500 and some to go. So, what kind of truck is that? That's an international. International? Okay. It's, it's an old food services of America. Oh yeah, I thought I recognized the color. Yeah. <laughs> well, when they get rid of them, they probably still got quite a, quite a bit of life left in For a farm? They? Yes, they do. Yeah, yeah. Probably not for them. Yeah. But for me, they have a lot of life. Yeah. A lot of years. Exactly. I'm going to get one more. How are you? Now, did you have to lengthen that truck when you got it? Yeah, was it, it, was, it, was, it was a tractor. Oh, okay. And I had a 74 that had on that one there. I had a 74 with a, you know, we took the bad noise off of it. And oh, had, yeah. Uh, uh, loose welding, stretch it. Uh-huh. Yeah, my, uh, my dad, my stepdad, hauled milk back in the day and started off on cans and his last truck was a, uh, I believe it was an S-Series, okay. 1800, and he had a bulk tank on and he, they had to, well I guess it came without a rear end, it was just a, a frame in the front end and then they put, they lengthened it, frame and put whatever rear end under it you wanted. And probably a transmission and motor or whatever you have. Yeah. At that time they did, they just gave a shell, cabs in a shell. Yeah, you frame. could get anything you wanted, you pretty much custom tailored it. So, okay. Yeah, this almost feels like cheating at me sitting in this nice air conditioned cab. It's like my Jeep. This is my third Jeep Wrangler, and it's kind of a. I call it my pimp Jeep, man. It's got electric windows and uh, air conditioning and everything. <laughs> it seems kind of, seems kind of like I'm cheating. This is my office. Yeah, your this office is right. And I've been on it with coveralls and a sweatshirt more than enough to keep you. Well, I just spent, uh, God, I don't know. I've probably been riding for about an hour uh, with Mike Lashaw in the uh, Axville Flow See how dusty I can get.
Oh yeah. You definitely got some angle on her. Definitely got some angle on it now. Well, he's down in the uh, down in the ravine now. We can see a little bit of dust. He should be poking his head up here pretty soon. And uh, kind of blowy out here. I hope you can hear me. Oh yeah, there he's starting to peek out above. There we go. I'm trying to run two cameras at once here. Probably won't be too successful. But uh, at least right now I'm upwind. Do a little backpedaling here. Got a fair bit of angle on her now. I don't know what the heck keeps him from sliding off the side. Corrective steering. Okay. Well, I'm going to get dusted, that's for sure. And let's see if I can get a couple of stills while we're watching the video. <laughs> I guess at some point I'm going to have to shut her down and duck and cover. As we're coming around into the sun. That should do it. Well, I got nice and dusty on that run as any good farmer should be. Haha, ha. not that I'm much of a farmer anymore. Not that I'm a farmer anymore. I can barely control the, the grass growing on my little quarter acre plot in the city. But you get a pretty commanding view of the countryside from up here. Here's one of Mike's trucks. He's got a pair of internationals that uh, he uses to haul grain with. At least there's a bit of a breeze out here. With a little luck you can kind of take advantage of the of the wind as far as blowing the chaff and dust obviously on that last uh, run. I wanted to be down below the combine so that meant I uh, had to suck up a fair bit of dust and chaff. But oh well. My farmer pants and my farmer boots on, so whatever I get is not an issue. At least this field is nice and roly-poly, and it's got some uh, 
good hillside angles to it. Thanks for good picture taking, good movie making. And once again, this is a Brady Boy Bill working out of Spokane, Washington. I'm a long ways from Brady Township, Michigan. And our host this afternoon is uh, the LaShaw Family Farm, Mike LaShaw. They've just kind of gotten rolling on the harvest this weekend. Mike figures they're about two weeks ahead of schedule here now. family grain bins and uh, this is where they keep most of, their, most of their wheat crop. I was just chatting with Matt, that is Mike's son. The two of them are farming about 1,500 acres and uh, I don't know if you can see him sticking up over there. He's going to come around here in a minute. We'll get some more pictures. Is a Case IH. 8010 with a 40 foot head and this is uh, Mike's brother I don't know if it's his only brother or one of his brothers anyhow so we'll maybe get a chance to see that puppy operating so we have a case IH 8010 coming at us with a 40 foot header so we went from uh, 30 foot to, to 40 foot here uh, the LaShaw tribe do some serious farming. Do some serious farming. Pretty cool stuff in my book. Let's see if I can back up without tripping over anything. got coasters on it. I don't know where is he going. Well, I guess I'm going to get dusted. We saw that boom come down. They can uh, lower one side of the combine. Quite the beast. Yeah, an AFX 8010 hillside, Case I-8, with a 40-foot head. Don't want to miss my ride. Well, we're we're back out with uh, back out with Mike. 
just got back with this truck with Matt down there. He's taking another truck load. And then I'm thinking I'm going to jump back in the combine. Don't have too much left. Very, very few acres. Probably enough to fill this truck. That would be about it. Anyhow, if I don't get a chance to talk to you in a little while, this is Brady Boy signing off from the Lataw Farm. And I might be back out tomorrow. of the day is to the is to load the header the head of the combine onto this little cart and uh, again it's a 30 foot head and Mike will just carry on with the combine up over the hill on this lane goes all the way through and uh, you know come back with a pickup and and grab the header because they're going to be cutting in a, in a different location tomorrow. So we'll see what's going to happen here. Okay. He said he had to take some pressure off. I didn't see much of anything happen. I saw the reel jump just a little bit, so maybe that was it. Up look. Case IH Hillco 2008 leveling system. And I don't know if you can read the dealer's sticker. Sold and serviced by St. John Hardware and Implement. And uh, they've got about six locations around here. The closest one here being Fairfield, which is uh, to the south of us couple miles to the west and, and then south down on Highway 27. Mike's down there disconnecting hydraulic hoses and the uh, PTO shafts that uh, turn the mechanism. They have to do a similar operation on the other side. Well, okay, Mike thinks he's got her about where he wants her. So he's uh, crawling back in the cab. And uh, inch her ever so slightly forward with the TA. Well, I take that back, it's not the TA, it's the Hydro. Everything, these are all hydrostatic drives these days, so it's not a not a TA that he's pushing the lever on. I had a flashback to too many years ago. It's all hydro now. Hmm. See if that was good enough. Well, Mike asked me if I got it on tape. He says, I hope you record that. That was the hole in the one. He says, that was about a one in a million. Just creep forward like that and <coughs> dropped her down and uh, she fell right into the cradle. Just like, uh, just like it probably does in the uh, Case IH promotional movies. Easy on, easy off. So he was over here on the left side of the combine and Flip some kind of a latching system and I suspect he's doing the same thing on the other side and then he's just gonna probably jump in the old cab and hoik her right home hmm. Ooh, I can see my shadow See if we can uh, get the combine away. Oh, up. Oh. 
there we go. Just like in the case IH advertising films. Easy on, easy off. Very good. Well, that about wraps it up, folks. This is Brady Boy signing off. Mike is going to be heading for the barn, and I'm going to be heading home. So, good night from the Palouse. Okay, here comes Mike down the hill and a bit of a, a bit of an angle. Now when I'm riding in the cab, the angles, you know, if you're on the side of a hill, it doesn't feel like a big deal. But when you're going nose down, you kind of get to a point where you just reflexively put a foot out in front of you because it feels like you at any minute you just may uh, tip right through the front of the cab. Uh, which is not usually the case. <laughs> I'm sure it's happened. Uh, Mike said uh, one year he had the, the small back steering wheels that was feeling awfully light back there, but uh, usually it's not, not something to be too concerned about. So anyhow, it was always fun to be be riding in the cab for one thing it's a whole lot cleaner and it's a lot cooler air conditioning on those things is pretty good so I think I'm gonna maybe wrap up this little sequence and then I'll be heading down to the truck and uh, I'm guessing that Mike's probably gonna unload dump his uh, his bin at this uh, at this point and I'll jump back in the cab And yes, I am getting dusty. It's tough to convey the angle of, of these hills. It's kind of a, kind of amazing. You hear the combine coming up over the rise. probably 30 or 40 seconds before you see one actually crest the, the top of the hill. I think that should be Michael coming up to the to the top at some point here. We'll cut out for a second. Well it sounds like he's getting close to the top of this particular hill. You can see the dust start to fly. Oh there he goes. He's peeking his head up over. There we go. Yeah, it looks like I'm going to get dusted again. Oh well. Into every life a little rain must fall. In this case it's a little dust may smack you around. Awful dry out here in the Palouse right now. And what's he gonna do? I guess he's gonna disappear behind another another hill. Down into the ravine, into the coulee. semi. Looks like we're getting a light check down here on the semi.
our seat belts for the buddy's seat. Well, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, don't put your feet against the window. To no, no, out. God, no, yeah. he puts in you yeah, and uh then we'll know. I think possibly we can take one more. Should be able to find it out here. <laughs> I hope so. Right there's fine Mike. You're, you're doing fine. That's splatter a little and makes that more. Yeah. You got me? No. You want it going just to, just part it just as it comes down for it gets cut off. again. Uh, we just had both combines dump their bins and they're having at it and uh, Mike has got a 30 foot header again combine with a 30 foot header which certainly isn't the biggest anymore and the other combine has a 25 foot header and uh, so Mike is uh, steering with one hand and eating his lunch with the other. And another roly-poly field here. My last round I rode with him, I felt, I kept feeling like we were going to go on our head. I was looking around for a place to strap myself in or hold on to. 